Cannabis Common Sense, the show that tells the truth about marijuana and the politics behind its prohibition. Hello and welcome to another exciting edition of Cannabis Common Sense. Welcome back and welcome to the new year. 2013, the first year where we have some areas here in the United States where marijuana is actually legal. Yay! Hallelujah. In Colorado and uh, Washington, we want to thank the voters of Colorado and Washington who voted by 55% to legalize marijuana in their state. And now it's legal there. We here in Oregon came close. We got 47% of the vote or 469 and we want to thank that 46.9 of Oregon voters and 61% of Multnomah County voters here where Portland, Oregon is located. Uh, we also want to note that tonight is uh, the one year anniversary of the passing of a good friend of both Casper Leach, my joint host, and myself, good friend Gatewood Galbraith. He passed away one year ago today at the age of 64, just before his 65th birthday. It was very unexpected. He had pneumonia. If he'd gone to the hospital the night before, he would have passed, uh, been with us today. But he sent out an email uh, just uh, on December 30th, less than a week before he passed away. And it's very inspirational. It's a post, actually, to Facebook. And what he said was, it's another great day in all our lives. Call up someone you love or would like to and let them know it. Make a resolution to lift someone's spirit each day and follow through with it. It doesn't take much, a smile, a kind word. Words are magic and create reality. And a desire to be loved yourself because that is all is what will happen to you when you give your smile. Try it and see. God bless you. And that was a message sent out December 30th, 2011, and then on January 4th, 2012, Gatewood Galbraith unexpectedly passed away. And we just want to note that. It's a big inspiration to our movement, myself and Casper and many of us out here. Absolutely. Came out and uh, did, we did a benefit for his run for governor in the state of Kentucky just before he passed as well. We have an interesting show for you tonight. It is actually our 666th show. We've done 666 shows since October of 1996. And so tonight we are going to commemorate our 666th show by bringing you the six most evil people in the history of marijuana prohibition. We'll be going into that a little bit later, but I've chosen the six most evil people in the history of marijuana prohibition. We'll be running a little bit of video and showing you some photos, but also, we have Jan Sue and John Cornett. Welcome, folks. Thank you. Thank you. And you have written a song in behalf of tonight's show as well about. Uh, it's called 666 uh, is a counterfeit trinity. All right. That's, that's intense. 666. Uh, six, six. I finished writing it like 10 minutes ago. That's great. I was listening. It sounds good. So you viewers are going to hear a freshly composed song from John Cornett. And Jan Suhurst. Thank you, Jen, folks. You're welcome. And uh, enjoy. Well, actually, let's for just a moment bring out our infamous dancing cannabis leaves just for the heck of it. I think they're almost ready. Feel the force. Here's John Cornett and Jan Sewers, their new composition. Thank you, folks. Seven is the number of God. Six is the number of man. Miracles, deceptions, carved in grains of sand. Judge 
judgments and convictions We're all guilty as hell In a pinnacle and the sky is falling But only time will tell The big penny is here Don't grab your bags and flee Six, six, six is just a It's written in the barcodes for we who understand. The number of the beast is the same number as man. Judgments and convictions are all guilty as hell. Hey. <laughs> we just wrote this song. That Thank was you good. Very much. That was don't very worry good. about a thing. God is in charge and all is well. You better believe it. All right. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you, viewers. So uh, I want to welcome Casper Leach, our joint host here on Cannabis Common Sense. How are you doing, Casper? Pretty groovy. I want to thank you for having me on the big broadcast. It's, it's, it's nice to be part of the show. And uh, I. I Spent some of my time standing in line trying to get my money back on my Mayan calendar. <laughs> Sent it back to the. I'm so glad members. that's happened now because now I, I don't have to keep hearing about the Mayan calendar oh, anymore. You know. God. Well, I mean, we're not here. We are in somebody's mind. All right. I see. And We've ascended to the next level. The holidays were just warming. I know for Christmas, Obama was nice enough to put in our stocking the Nida bill, which indefinite detention until 2017 available for all americans just you know watch peace and cues and then Congress but he's not going to use it he says no. i don't know why he signed it so somebody else could use it well you know it's just I don't there know. and then uh, that was christmas and then congress gave us a gift new year's eve at 2 a.m while we were all celebrating 2013 they were shoving our future right down the toilet so well, happy holidays i am not so sure i'm not so sure i think we have a future we just have to take control of the system and one of the best ways we can do that is by ending adult marijuana prohibition well, and restoring hemp which is what the voters in washington and colorado have done then it's in the process of taking effect and what we almost did on an even bigger basis here in oregon now but what you tell me is that we're, this is the evil show. The, the six this is six or six hundred and sixty-six well, show. I have a question: Is my we, old dealer Rick Ainsworth on there for stuffing me for no. two hundred? No, no, he's not that bad. Oh, he's not well, that bad. These right. people are really bad people, and we'll talk about why they're so bad. In fact, maybe we should start Rick, right I'm, off the bat well, to get going and talk about the Let's evilness of the are we going from sixth most evil six person. To one or one yeah, to we're going to go from the sixth most evil right. person. And we're going to work our way down to the most evil person Who is in the history on the, of on marijuana the list, prohibition. On our you sure? Okay, on our list on numbers, let me guess. Is it? Okay, no, don't guess. Let's right. just go ahead and, and number six do it. Is, number six, uh -huh. the sixth most evil person is John Law, <gasps> the what, director of the Drug Enforcement Administration, and he's. One, the, the number one Drug Enforcement Administration person we put up there because what John Lon did is he denied uh, the findings of Administrative Law Judge Francis Young. In 1988, Francis Young issued an opinion and ordered John Lon, the head of the Drug Enforcement Administration, to reschedule marijuana out of Schedule 1 down to Schedule 4 or 5, where it could be used medicinally. He said, Judge Francis Young said that in his ruling as administrative law judge, after a 10-, 12-year hearing, 
the, the and, uh, uh, hearings and uh, findings all around the country in a about 700 page opinion. One of the things he said is marijuana is the safest therapeutically active substance known to man. Wow. Another thing he said was, this is Francis Young said was that marijuana is less harmful than many common foods we eat. That, you know, seven potatoes, raw potatoes can kill you. And that marijuana won't kill you at any level. Anyway, John Lawn was the administrator, the head of the Drug Enforcement Administration then, and said that that 700 page ruling had no scientific basis wow. and that uh, he was the arbitrator and he refused to implement it. He said it was all anecdotal. And so John Lawn, by turn, being the first one to turn down marijuana rescheduling back in 1988, makes it on the list wow. as uh, one of the most evil people. Now, another thing that John Lawn did is back in October, of uh, 2010, he came out with all the other heads of the DEA uh, over the past 25 years, right. and they opposed Proposition 19 uh. in California. To uh, and they wrote a letter to uh, Attorney General Eric Holder, telling him to oppose Proposition 19 in California in October, just a few days before the election. And that had a negative impact on California's Proposition 19. Evil. Then John Lawn also wrote a letter in September of this year to Eric Holder, telling him to oppose Oregon's me ballot measure 80, no. uh, Washington's ballot measure I-502, and Colorado's Amendment 64, the three legalization bills that were on the ballot last November. So John Lawn led the other DEA agents in opposing that and was quoted in the media how the Attorney General should wow. uh, send a message to Oregon, Washington, and Colorado wow. to oppose those ballot measures. Well, wow. sounds and, like we, and we propositions. Would've, we would have been better off. So that's John Lawn, and those are the reasons. Too he, bad. There he is, the sixth most evil person in the history of marijuana prohibition. Person who, who sent uncounted tens of thousands of otherwise innocent marijuana users to prison who by his very acts, uh, by denying Judge Francis Young's opinion to reschedule marijuana based on his baloney opinion, you know, this John Lawn, the administrator of the DEA, is the sixth most evil person. He, how many hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of patients suffered without their medicine since then because of this man. This man has led to untold suffering. We would have been better off had he been a stillborn. Well, that's, that's. Just saying, that's honey. That's okay. All right. All right. So He's who's. Better off if he hadn't done those evil things well, anyway, you know. Okay. <laughs> You're you know, so, we are taking nice. phone right. calls I tonight, to, too. We have to be nice. Let you're me say, this is nice our, our yeah. first live show of the year. And if you have a question or comment, uh, you are welcome to call us at 503-288-4442. That's 503-288-4442. Who's number five on this great list of humanity that you have uh, for us to examine? Okay, let's go to the fifth most evil person in the history of marijuana prohibition. <gasps> there she is. Plastic. Nancy Reagan. Plastic. Just oh. say no. She brought us the Just Say No campaign and organized oh. against marijuana legalization. She is uh, one of two of the people on our list that is still alive today. Is Nancy she? Reagan is still. Uh, did she pass away recently? I don't. Know. I don't it's think hard she to had. tell. Even maybe, when you see her on TV, she, she looks dead. I know it's hard to tell. She she was. Uh, you know, part of the Reagan administration, she consulted astrologers and gave Reagan uh, yeah. information from her astrologer right. to base international policy on. And most famously, she urged the, the, this just say no campaign. Of course, what it should say is instead of N-O, it should say K-N-O. But uh, she came here to Oregon when I was working on the Oregon Marijuana Initiative back in 19... 86, when we were on the ballot with 1986's Ballot Measure 5, and she toured the state for three days opposing Oregon's marijuana initiative back then. So by uh, 
giving our school kids this just say no chant instead of educating them and teaching them uh, about their responsibilities to others and and uh, no. she would just just say no and I obviously understand. that didn't work I understand because one of the reasons why I videotaped the funeral of Reagan was so I could sit and watch her cry over and over and over. I just love to see oh. her cry. <laughs> it was great. I understand because she made so many other people cry with her policy. I sit and watch that and laugh. It's funny. I see. Yeah. Okay. I see. Okay. So who is the next person on this great list? Well, we're going through it pretty quick. Yeah. I think well. we want to. We don't want to go. We want to save a little bit. We've got only got four more oh. people. All right. So let's. Let's build our suspense just a little bit. Well, we could put Rick Ainsworth back on there because he really stooped me for some. <laughs> and he called it, and it wasn't. I mean, and same with the and LSD, that's, that's not a bothering. flashback or not a. I see. Take you to court for that. Anyway. So, okay. Well, but, yeah, yeah it, was a, it was a unique time when we were running around with, with Nancy Reagan screaming, just say no. I mean, really amping up the airways with, with – uh, Banning all kinds of advertising and going yeah, and around. they came out with that uh, those advertisements. This is your brain on drugs, you know, the fried egg yeah, and the right. thing, and that became a cliche after a while. But that whole uh, partnership for a drug-free America found its its nexus under Nancy Reagan, along with uh, uh, Mothers Against Drunk Driving and kind of this intolerant thing, and especially aimed at marijuana people. And again. We saw a rapid escalation mm -hmm. of uh, well, marijuana arrests under Ronald Reagan. I remember in addition the, to what uh, you know she did with with the drug groups. You're going to say? Well, up until that time, first ladies were kind of like a do-nothing first lady, and yeah. when we heard that you know the first lady was taking on this anti-drug campaign, we all thought, well, that's good. Give her something stupid to do. You know, that'll keep her busy while. Everybody else in Washington does, you know, real policy. We had no idea that she was going to go and get a hold of all of her Hollywood friends and get a lot of funding for it and turn it into her particular legacy. Yeah. So uh, thank that. you so much. We appreciate that. On behalf of all the people who are behind bars, did without their medication and suffered, we thank you. So let's just go ahead and go to the next one. Of course, we're going to have to name her husband as number four as the fourth most Ronnie. evil person Everybody loves in Ronnie. the history of marijuana prohibition we have a couple of pictures that don't actually fit right on the screen let's see how, the how they are able to fit them in there see, what yeah, a nice guy. there it is Everybody you need not Ronnie. inhale to enjoy a cigar he's advertising cigars see what a nice guy and you know i think bill clinton must have taken a ah. message from this you know you don't need to inhale to enjoy yeah. marijuana or he liked the, he liked his so cigars that's where, too that's where clinton got the uh, the saying you know i did not inhale he was just <laughs> imitating ronald reagan you know they're they're all just cia dupes you know so no. reagan was uh kind of the most mindless of presidents until uh bush jr bush jr was a little bit stupider but uh well it was interesting to observe that we had the uh, former head of the CIA as the vice president yeah. who was not in the loop. That guy was awake and bouncing around the Congress and the Senate and the Washington and a lot of... And well, this the whole guy thing who was too, in charge was napping, Under Ronald Reagan, you know? we had the Contras and their cocaine exports to yeah. fund the Freedom Fighters. Right. And they sold arms to the Iranian hostages right. so they could give those freedom fighters more money and right. fund the, the drugs and, yeah. you know, so... Uh, he made an example of how to do drug selling, didn't and he? And the other thing about Ronald Reagan is he, uh, his name is Ronald Wilson Reagan. Right. Ronald Wilson Reagan. Each of those names has six letters. <gasps> so Ooh. just think about that. He, he, he his, well, his name had six letters, yeah. six, 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 Ronald Wilson Reagan. Wow. So, uh, you know, I always... Uh, well, as they say, the devil's in the details, right? Yeah. They're always saying so. that in Washington. Have you so. noticed that? And he the also, devil's in the details. Uh, you know, led to uh, that, that, you know, they bombed the Marines in Lebanon. And the next day, what does he do? He sends 7,000 troops into Grenada, a little island with 4,000 people. And, and out of those 7,000 troops, 150 of them get medals of honor like they did something heroic. You know? Exactly. And I remember so, listening to the, the reports on the radio and what they were really was invading was like a, an art college. Yeah. Yeah. 
He also <laughs> turned down an offer to eliminate all nuclear weapons from uh, Mikhail Gorbachev that nice Gorbachev made to Reagan in uh, uh, the, uh, a, a summit in Reykjavik, Iceland. So he turned down the ability, the, let it slip through his hands, the ability to wipe out nuclear weapons well, on this planet. Let me Instead, and you know what it was based on? His Star Wars idea, uh, an idea that they still haven't perfected here 25 wow. years later. Wow. I don't see how they can take this guy, Ronald Reagan, and they consider him to be a great president. You know, they name, renamed National Airport in Washington, D.C. after Ronald Reagan. Now it's Reagan Airport. You have to go fly through that if you want the closest flight into Washington, D.C. Now, I personally find it disgusting that they named, you know, that they even consider this guy good. I mean, he was stupid. He, uh, he, he you know, his, he, he should have been indicted for the Iran-Contra thing because he knew about it. I mean, well, you know, people kept going, an actor, president, no way. And then we woke up after the election and went, an actor? President, no way. Yeah, yeah. It was <laughs> way. Crazy. It was crazy. There's no doubt about totally it. Totally strange. And you're right. Yeah, you know, he slept through his administration, which I thought was. And here he is advertising Chesterfield cigarettes. Hey, that's Ronnie. Okay. You know, I love Ronnie. No, seriously. Yeah. No, yeah. there he is. You know, I can't read that from here where I'm at. I'll tell you what it Ronald says. It Reagan says it's got 200 chemicals in it that when you smoke it will destroy your lungs <laughs> and cause you to die. I don't think that's what it says. Please but. buy this. I'm your next president. Oh, P.S. Marijuana, that's good for you. My wife's against that. <laughs> yeah, and he is too. He, yeah. He uh, was, uh, you know, uh, led the charge along with uh, others we'll talk about here in just a moment. But some of his cohorts or but maybe somebody should have rolled a big one for his wife and stuck it he should have had it might have slowed down his alzheimer's you know yeah. if he'd only used marijuana medicinally it might have slowed down his alzheimer's because there's evidence that cannabinoids slow the progression of alzheimer's and other neurodegenerative diseases so if Ronald Reagan had used medicinal marijuana, maybe he wouldn't have become a vegetable. And again, the way... But he'd they, already done so much evil, he probably just deserved The way it. they drug his dead body all around the United States, and Nancy did cried in every spot. That was the best part. I loved watching her cry. You know, you really, you can do <laughs> okay. that. But they just drug his dead body all around the United States. Like, we cared. I mean, right. I was kind of applauding. Or well, and then they, they hold him up as like some kind of icon. When, you know, he's a conservative icon, he said he was going to cut government. Instead, he doubled uh, the, the budget deficit, uh, and he increased taxes, too, you know. not Anyway, that's well, Ronald Reagan one, is I'm the saying, one last fourth. Thing. Go ahead. When she throws her head down like this and she cries and they got to drag her from the coffin, that is the best. Did Nancy best. do that? I didn't watch close oh enough. Oh, my enough. God. It was, well, I have to. It I really it just that. makes you laugh. Oh, my God. It's great. Okay. Yeah. Well, we have a little video we're going to run now about uh, our theme, the most evil people in the history of drug prohibition, tonight on the 666th episode <laughs> of Cannabis Common Sense. So enjoy our video. The story of Harry Anslinger's role in the prohibition of marijuana and the criminalization of marijuana users is a very interesting story. It's almost comical when you go back and you read some of the, uh, the newspaper accounts and some of the rhetoric surrounding the prohibition of marijuana to see these uh, incredibly exaggerated assertions uh, such as that you know, marijuana would take normal people upon smoking it and make them assassins overnight or that inevitably it would lead to insanity you know, in a larger sense to uh, debauchery and immorality. <laughs> What Anslinger did is basically sort of assemble all these forces and kind of harness all this energy against marijuana as the assassin of youth and use it as the tool for promoting the adoption of the Uniform Narcotic Drug Act, and it worked. A few years later, Anslinger would achieve his ultimate goal, the passage of the Marijuana Tax Act of 1937. The uh, Marijuana Tax Act was passed at the national level in 1937 and that um, the story about the prohibition of marijuana was basically a story emerging in the 1930s uh, and largely driven by Harry Anslinger. 
50% of the violent crimes committed in districts occupied by Mexicans, Greeks, Turks, Filipinos, Spaniards, Latin Americans, and Negroes may be traced to the use of marijuana. I believe in some cases one cigarette might develop a homicidal mania, probably to kill his brother. If the hideous monster Frankenstein came face to face with the monster marijuana, he would drop dead of fright. Public enemy number one in the United States is drug abuse. In order to fight and defeat this enemy, it is necessary to wage a new all-out offensive. Oh, there is a commission that is supposed to make recommendations to me about this subject. It became apparent how little was really known about the effects of this drug and how little evidence there was to support the claims about its dangers. The way that we framed it was that there was no current evidence that occasional use, moderate use, which some called recreational use, of marijuana by basically psychologically healthy people was harmful. The recommendation of the uh, commission in its first report is that we do not feel that private use or private possession in one's own home should have the stigma of criminalization, that uh, people who experiment should not be criminalized for that particular behavior. Eventually we had endorsements from the American Bar Association, from the American Medical Association, from the American Public Health Association, the National Education Association, I'm sure there were many, many others. But mainstream institutions in American society said yes, this is the right way to go about dealing with this problem. And eventually, over the period from 1973 to 1977, you had uh, uh, 12 states uh, that actually did adopt the Commission's recommendation and, and, and decriminalized. What we've been able to achieve has been done with your help, with us working together as a nation united. Now we need your support again. Drugs are menacing our society. They're threatening our values and undercutting our institutions. They're killing our children. From the beginning of our administration, we've taken strong steps to do something about this horror. Tonight, I can report to you that we've made much progress. 37 federal agencies are working together in a vigorous national effort. And by next year, our spending for drug law enforcement will have more than tripled from its 1981 levels. We have increased seizures of illegal drugs. Shortages of marijuana are now being reported. Last year alone, over 10,000 drug criminals were convicted, and nearly $250 million of their assets were seized by the DEA the Drug Enforcement Administration. And in the most important area, individual use, we see progress. In four years, the number of high school seniors using marijuana on a daily basis has dropped from one in 14 to one in 20. The U.S. military has cut the use of illegal drugs among its personnel by 67% since 1980. These are a measure of our commitment and emerging signs that we can defeat this enemy. But we still have much to do. It really blows my mind to understand that this war started a hundred years ago. Her started their false propaganda, the lies, renamed the plant hemp, renamed the plant cannabis, and called it marijuana. Because he lost a lot of timber to the Mexicans, he wasn't too happy with them. But California started the law in 1913. Several states followed quickly, and before you knew it, the conglomerate of the industrial complex had managed to pass a bill called the, the uh, Marijuana Tax Act of 1937. It was proven unconstitutional by 1969, and, and Nixon knew he didn't have much time to keep this law going, so he gathered his conservative friends to give him advice and find nasty things to say about this plant, but they found the opposite as usual. They found it is not habit forming. It does not lead to other drugs. It doesn't do any of the things that you said, that they said they do, and so he didn't like that report. He tore it up, threw it that in the garbage. That was the Schaefer Commission the report. The Schaefer Commission report, and, but here's the tragedy. So actually the only federal law, you law enforcement, listen carefully, because you took an oath to uphold our Constitution too. That lie, which disrespects 
my fourth and fifth amendment rights that lie that's kept me from getting a job since the 80s so now i live with a miserable income and you got to support me that same lie has put over 20 million of us under arrest at one time or another now how many of us are are there here how many people smoke marijuana in this country what is the percentage of what you arrest is it one percent is it ten percent is it four percent well, whatever you think it is, multiply that by 25 million and you might get a clue, a hint. Why are we forced to follow, this is the federal law they try to put on the states and everyone else, to follow the legacy of a man who left the presidency in disgrace for lack of honesty? This needs to end. That is one of the main reasons I'm asking everybody to vote for 80, to vote to help the people in Colorado, in Michigan, and send a clear message to the administration. This will not be tolerated any longer. We have not. That's why there are millions of us breaking your law every day. It has no respect for us. It doesn't deserve respect. Now change it. Please change it. Vote on 80. If you live in other states, help those ones in Colorado and Michigan, and definitely come contact your legislators and your president and remind you, remind them that this man changed these laws all by himself with no help from the Congress or the Senate. It was just an order that he gave that we're living under this lie and this lie has to end. Five generations of lies and misinformation has rendered us a nation very, very incapable of making rational decisions, mostly because our system is not satisfied, the endocannabinoid system that opens our mind and expands our thinking and allows us to be real human beings. Okay, I want to thank uh, Michael Bacara, Ico, for putting together that great video for us, showing some of our six most evil people in the history of marijuana prohibition. As uh, we were saying, this is the 666th show that we've done of Cannabis Common Sense since its inception in October of 1996. Which is cool because this started out being called the Devil's Weed, right? I guess some, and yeah, that was so, one of the names yeah. that Harry Anslinger gave it. And so now we're and well, there talking were other about people the, who mentioned, called it that, starting back in like the 1880s, yeah. these preachers in so, the Midwest. And now we're talking about the devils who made this weed, the devil weed. And, and so I don't, I don't we come up with the, the six most yeah. evil people I don't, in I, honor. I don't, don't want to beat around the bush. I don't want to beat around the bush about it. You know, I really want to. Okay, for, the, the, the sixth most evil person was John Lawn, who, uh -huh. who refused to reschedule marijuana when an administrative judge ordered him to do so. He was the, uh, there he is, the uh, drug czar, the head of the Drug Enforcement Administration back and reason, in 1988. And the reason why we then, still allow abortions in our country. <laughs> and then non Nancy Reagan was the fifth most evil person in the history of marijuana prohibition then our number th number four most evil person uh well, nancy was fifth her husband ooh. ronald reagan well there well, he is selling well, chesterfield cigarettes we'll, we'll, we'll be well. back in just a second we're yeah, going to beat right. around the bush just right. a little bit more right. and take a viewer phone call okay welcome to the show caller hello howdy um my son sells marijuana to medical dispensaries uh-huh right now and i'm wondering if with an octo like uh legislation if you would still have a job selling marijuana to stores um under the legislation or well, you know, would we didn't pass he... octa if under octa he could have gotten a job doing that you know and jump through the hoops to get a license he certainly could have octa was the most lenient of the three state votes that happened in november of 2012, this past November, two, two, two and a half months ago. And so Okta would have allowed someone to, to get a license and be able to do that legally. Now there are licensing things now, in, are there, they're putting together the rules in Washington and Colorado. In Washington, Colorado, they, they would not allow that to happen. In, in Colorado, they would actually. In Washington, they wouldn't allow that to happen. But in, in Colorado, uh, the rule is the dispensaries have to produce 70% of their own medicine that they can buy 30% from outside producers. 
So that's the rule in Colorado. But Oregon's would have allowed it. Colorado's will allow it, not under the new legalization bill. That is yet to be determined. But Washington's uh, would not allow that for certain. Oh, okay, great. All right. Thank well, you. thanks for your call. So thanks. as we were discussing the, the most evil people in the history of marijuana prohibition, we have a comment from a studio audience member. Go right ahead, sir. Um, I'd like to strongly object to the fact that um, – under the medical marijuana program as it, it, it exists now, people are not allowed to uh, consume in public. Like if, they're, like if they're in their car and the windows are up, you know, that kind of example, whereas they're, they're, they're allowed to smoke cigarettes or take other pharmaceutical drugs. That's a very good point. You know, and w w because it's like it's classified as drug taking mm -hmm. when it's really, you know, uh, medicine. Okay. That's a very good point. But my question to, to that is, uh, are you allowed to drink? I mean, you're sitting in your car or you're sitting on a park bench. Can you, like, pop out a beer and drink it? Or no, pour you can't do a that. Shot That's obviously, you can't do so that. So it's kind of like the same, same treatment then, isn't it, in that aspect? Well, you, if you're sitting in your home and stuff, you can't be arrested for having a drink. Right. Or if you're, you know, over 21. Right. But uh, if you're younger. But anyway, let's get back to our list. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are down yeah. to... The third most evil person in the history of marijuana oh, yeah. prohibition. You know, when Ronald Reagan was president, Ooh. he named this person who was already in his cabinet as his drug czar. Ah. And so this is the first real drug czar. Did this is the czar? man who brought the word czar back in, into American government. The first Ooh. time we ever had a czar, a uh, despotic... It's Who would be from a power George H. W. Bush. Oh, George no. H. W. Not that Bush nice was guy. the Have you first. Seen his wife? Yeah, she's yeah. She's adorable. She's the mom of. She. He married his mom. He. He's such a sweet guy. Yeah. That's what I thought was a little weird. I mean. There's and there's a lot of a, evidence. You know, he no. he was uh, named the uh, head of the uh, CIA under uh, yep. Gerald Ford, and yep. before that under. Uh, um, Richard Nixon, yep. he was the head of the Republican Party. Yep. And, and he, uh, he, he was while. there in Texas the day John F. Kennedy was killed, and there's a lot of evidence that he was, uh, just he was one of the people as a CIA person no, who, who a, worked on no. uh, the Kennedy the assassinations. Applauding, going, hey, John, hey. But worst of nice all, guy. he escalated the drug war. In fact, back in 1986, when we had the Oregon Marijuana Initiative on the ballot, uh, we made the ballot earlier than any other initiative in state history back in 1985. We made the ballot in October of 85 yep. for a vote in November of 1986. Nice. Well, in January of 86, mm -hmm. George H.W. Bush mm -hmm. came to uh, Oregon and toured the state for 13 days campaigning against <laughs> Oregon's see, ballot measure. Yeah, I guess we did. Yeah. yeah. See, he pays attention to the average Joe. What a nice guy. <laughs> see? Yeah. And uh, uh, the head of the CIA, he comes in at number three on our list well, you of know, the six most evil people in the history of marijuana the prohibition. Affair. He had nothing to do with all that cocaine smuggling. So he, he probably uh, arranged the October surprise where he told the Iranians, hold on yeah. to the hostages until we get in there, and then you can let them go. Well, the Iranians waited to the moment Ronald Reagan was sworn in, and that very minute they released the hostages. So Surprise. they kept their end of the deal. And then they gave the Iranians arms that they used to, to ship yeah. cocaine by the, went to the Contras. And so, uh, and Bush actually wrote that, you know, he should have been indicted in the Iran-Contra scandal as well. He wrote that he knew more of the, de in his own, uh, 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 autobiography? No, not an autobiography. What do they call the book? Uh, Mem uh, memoirs? No, not memoirs. Minutes. Your diary. He diary. wrote in his personal diary oh. that uh, he knew all the details of the Iran Contra thing. He was afraid he was going to get called in to testify. But instead, he was elected president. Yeah. And he uh, pardoned a lot of the people involved in the yeah. Iran Contra thing. But George Bush, as the head of the, uh, the Office of National Drug Control Policy, as the Vice President of the United States, comes in third on our well, list well, of the six most 
talks also about how he and Barbara used to date and how they used to kiss. <laughs> really, you know, nice guy. Okay. So let's go on down to our second most evil person right. in the history of marijuana prohibition. It is actually, it was covered in our, our video there just a moment ago, uh, the person who started marijuana prohibition, the person who's considered the father of marijuana prohibition here in the United States, the first head of the Federal Bureau of Narcotics, Mr. Harry Anslinger. That Harry name rings a bell. Anslinger. That name rings he, a there's bell. There's one of the things he oh, says look. that Reefer makes darkies think they're as good as white men. Wait a minute, darkies. That's what, what, are darkies? what Harry Anslinger said. What are darkies? Um, uh, they're people who aren't white men. Oh. If you aren't a white man, then you're a darkie. Well, now, I he's guess. a government official. He no. was the first head of the Federal Bureau of Narcotics, and he ran the Federal Bureau of Narcotics from 1931 till 1961. But well, as a government official, he probably... John Kennedy, he John F. Research. Kennedy fired him. No. Yeah, he Why? did. And he led, he invented marijuana prohibition. Now, he was the nephew by marriage with uh, uh, the head of Standard Oil and the Secretary of Treasury under several presidents, Andrew Mellon. He married wow. the niece of Andrew Mellon. And Mellon controlled Standard Oil, wow. the Mellon Bank, wow. and uh, they wanted to wipe out uh, hemp for fuel so that we didn't use biofuels, we only used petroleum. Oh. And he wanted to wipe out uh, hemp for fiber so we wouldn't have hemp paper, we'd have to use tree paper. Nice. We wouldn't have hemp cloth, we'd have to use cotton. Nice. So we have another picture of Anslinger well, there so too what, so that shows him so in the midst of you know, carrying out his duties as the head of the Federal Bureau, Bureau of Narcotics. He also, Anslinger brought us the Single Convention Treaty of 1961 as his parting gift, where oh. he put the prohibition of marijuana into the United Nations treaty structure. And he, he thought that was his parting gift to make sure we could never legalize marijuana because they made it illegal by these international treaties. And it was Harry Anslinger. Uh, he was in kind of a power struggle with J. Edgar Hoover with the FBI, Harry Anslinger with the, drug, the uh, Federal Bureau of Narcotics, and Hoover won. But then in 1971, the Federal Bureau of Narcotics merged with some other Treasury Department agencies to become the Drug Enforcement Administration. What a hero. In 1972. He managed to export American policies and the American way of life overseas. And I, there's another... Uh, uh, he, he basically lied. He had what he called a gore file that showed pic people that had been mutilated Ooh. and said that's what ca marijuana causes. It causes people Ooh. to go crazy and kill their family and friends. Harry Anslinger actually said that in the propaganda Ooh. and it was sh shown in the movie Reefer Madness, Assassin of Youth, these other videos that are out there that uh, you can watch on online. He created uh, about a dozen different films in conjunction with Hollywood, the same way that J. Edgar Hoover worked on a lot of movies about the G-Men and the work of the FBI. Uh, Anslinger worked on a lot of movies like Reefer Madness on the work of the Federal Bureau of Narcotics. Oh. So he worked hand in hand with uh, Hollywood to mold public opinion and prohibit marijuana. What? And the primary I reason was to protect the economic holdings of the petrochemical, pharmaceutical, military, industrial, transnational, corporate, elite sons of a bitches, huh. you know? So, uh, this guy was multitasking, multi-talented, very creative. <laughs> Shut, up. Shut oh, okay. up. He is the second most <laughs> evil person in the history of marijuana Ooh. prohibition, Harry Anslinger. All right. We have another phone call. Let's go ahead. Hey, Before Colin. we bring you the most evil person, just hang on. Can you guess who is the most evil person, according to my analysis okay, of okay. people? But we have a phone call. Welcome right. to the show, caller. Are Hello, you me? caller. Uh, am I the one on the line? You, you are, are the one. Happy New Year. Okay. Well, uh, I'm very interested in knowing more about uh, hemp products aside from uh, smoking, such as uh, industry uh, requires a lot of fuel and uh, hemp also provides uh, different types of other products that will benefit our society. 
And uh, do you know anything about maybe the oil companies fighting against uh, any hemp products? Do I? That's what I was just talking about. Yeah, I definitely know about it. In fact, I'm, I'm kind of one of the experts on it. But uh, in fact, if you go to the Great Book of Hemp, which was written by Richard Rowan, he will mention my companies here in Portland, Oregon, back on page three of the Great Book of Hemp as the first companies to import hemp paper and fiber and fabric into North America in several generations. But according to a study out of Notre Dame University that was published in the Notre Dame journal American Midlands Naturalist back in 1975, it was written by Haney and Crucho of the University of Illinois at Urbana, and it was about feral or wild hemp in, in central, east central Illinois. He said that, uh, that study said that hemp makes over 8,000 pounds of seeds per acre and that you can press those and get 300 gallons of oil per acre, which makes it three times more productive than any other seed oil crop. You can use hemp seed oil and other vegetable oils directly to run biodiesel fuel. You don't have to convert it at all. Diesel engines will run hemp seed oil and other and DuPont was importing huge amounts of the standard seed, oil yeah. in particular. DuPont wasn't really importing it, but they were synthesizing products from right. uh, pet petrochemicals. So I hope that helps you answer that. You, you can make uh, hemp produces more biodiesel fuel and more ethanol fuel. It's the number one fuel crop, and that's the main reason it was made illegal. Well, I meant uh, they were bringing it in for oh, really? paints. And yeah. That. So yeah. Illegality yeah. due to uh, products uh, competing against the oil companies. And here's, here's the yeah. next. And Henry Ford, in fact, it's invented a, a car. The body was made of hemp and soy fiber, and it ran on hemp seed oil, biofuel. So yeah. Henry Ford actually drove his own car and had a prototype for, for manufacturing that was introduced in Popular Mechanics in, in uh, 1942. And uh, uh, we have uh, pictures of that and some uh, information about it on our Facebook website. And even though other plants are just as uh, friendly when it comes to producing fuel, the cool thing about hemp is that it grows every place where other plants don't. This and it produces a lot more. The yeah. next most productive seed oil crops are rapeseed, also called canola oil, yep. soybean oil, and sunflower seeds. Each of those make about 100 to 120 gallons per acre, where hemp, according to this study out of uh, Notre Dame and the University of Illinois at Urbana, uh, makes over 300 gallons of oil per acre. So it's three times more productive than the next most productive seed oil crops. I'll take hemp for paint. At this time in the U.S., at this time in the U.S., we don't have any hemp seed oil being produced. I mean, That's like, right. I mean, importing yeah, some from Canada. Wise but they have to use low THC hemp that only produces one fifteenth as much seed oil. So it's not really, uh, they require that they use this low THC hemp. Where the feral hemp that was studied at Notre Dame and the University of Illinois at Urbana was about 3% THC. The rules up in Canada and Europe is they can only grow uh, hemp that has less than three tenths of 1% or 10 times less THC. And those plants only produce about one fifteenth to one twentieth as much seed oil and about half as much fiber as the wild feral hemp that still isn't psychoactive here in the United States. We have we have different countries uh, producing oil, but who sets these standards for the THC content? Uh, the federal government right now. The federal government and for the the other countries international treaties. It's controlled the United Nations. Uh, uh, drug Commission, which meets in Central Europe. And this also plays so is there a different in other countries. in the United Nations against the hemp? Well, that guy, Harry Anslinger, that we were talking about, spearheaded a treaty, the Single Convention Treaty, that brought the United Nations into prohibiting hemp and mandated that all the signatories of this United Nations Treaty have to prohibit marijuana. And they could still allow hemp for fuel and fiber, but the countries have ruled that that means they can only grow this very low uh, THC, relatively non-productive variety of cannabis. And it's can also patented. We, the we, only way you can grow that is to have a patent and import the seed from France. And of course, the federal government doesn't allow us to import that seed for growing hemp in this country. Anyway, you know, I appreciate your call. I hope I answered your question.
kind of germane uh, to our discussion. Members. You have a good night. We're going to now talk about the most evil person Ooh. in the history of marijuana prohibition. Well, the person who I okay. think what, wait, wait, wait. is... You, you want to know if I can guess who... Well, it might we've be. already talked about it. You know. Well, all right, fine. All right. All right, go ahead. It is Tricky Dick Nixon. <gasps> Richard Nixon no. is the most evil person. He is the one who declared the war on drugs. He merged the... Federal Bureau of Narcotics with several other treasury organizations to become the Drug Enforcement Administration. Oh. There he is with Elvis oh. Presley, and he oh. made Elvis Presley, in, during, when they were making this picture, he named Elvis as a special agent of the newly formed Drug Enforcement Administration. So Elvis here is he high is. There. I think, Elvis I is think high maybe he photo. is. I yeah. think maybe he definitely died of pills. Um, yeah. That's another story while oh, yeah. sitting on his toilet. And in, uh, but poor Elvis. But yeah. you know, here he is. Tricky Dick Nixon killed the king of rock and roll yeah, now, and named him a DEA agent. Thank you. You know, yeah. what could you say? You know, we have another picture of Tricky Dick Nixon, the most evil man in the history of marijuana prohibition. He also, you know, when he became president, they sa he said he had a secret plan to end the war in Vietnam. Instead, he escalated it, dropped 60% of the bombs over the next seven years of his presidency before he finally did end the war in you, Vietnam. You ninny, that was his <laughs> secret plan. So, <laughs> it was to bomb them out of existence. Yeah, More than go. half of all... American casualties occurred during in Vietnam occurred during oh, his presidency see, and over two million it. Vietnamese were killed in the bombing see? raids and, and a million people in that. Cambodia it's and Laos. How can you top being evil? And there he is shown Ooh. shredding the Ooh. Schaefer committee report. He impaneled a, a group of scientists and experts and medical school professors to investigate marijuana, the Dr. Schaefer Commission. Dr. Tom and Dr. in Rio 1960, he, he, he testified before them. Yeah. Uh, but in, in Norman Zinberg, a Harvard medical professor yeah. who I, I had the privilege of, of uh, uh, spending some time with, he uh, was on the Schaefer Commission. And uh, Nixon took the Schaefer Commission, this marijuana report, and threw it out and, and instead declared a war on drugs. In fact, we have a little video. We're going to run very quickly here. Okay. And just show the beginning of our, uh, our video that we've shown in the past with... Uh, his his uh, wife had no idea why they called him Tricky Dicky. It just made no sense to her. <laughs> Do they have that video? Let's see. We, here we go. It won't be long. Maybe. Increased the amount of money for handling the problem of dangerous drugs sevenfold. It will be $600 million this year. More money will be needed in the future. I want to say, however, that despite our budget problems, to the extent money can help in meeting the problem of dangerous drugs, it will be available. This is one area where we cannot have budget cuts because we must wage what I have called total war against public enemy number one in the United States, the problem of dangerous drugs. It's a no-knock raid, don't be afraid We'll shoot your dogs in front of your kids Cause we are the SWAT We're here for your part And all the cash that you've got We are adrenaline And that's where we, that's where Taking orders from the czar That's where their actions have led us today that's why they that's are right. the most have evil over 70,000 no knock raids each year here in the United States killing hundreds of people well, every year mayors of towns all kinds of people we got about 3 but minutes there he is. Richard Nixon I is the most evil person I want to say in this the history of marijuana prohibition I want to say before we go off the air there's only been one person who when they died I said out loud the world is now a better place and it was the day Richard Nixon died, and I called my parents and said, we have a reason to celebrate. 
And we did. We went down to Applebee's and we partied in the neighborhood like it was good. All right. Yeah. Okay, Casper, you want to give a plug for your radio show? I do. I want to thank you for tuning in to AmericanFreedomRadio.com and listening to Time for Hemp every Monday through Friday from 10 to 11 a.m. Pacific Standard, which is 1 to 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Please share it with your friends. And we're also found on iTunes. Type in Time for Hemp in your search engine and go to TimeForHemp.com. Check it out. All right. Thank you, Casper. I'm, thank you, viewers, for going through again. These, this is, the reason we have named the six most evil people in the history of marijuana prohibition is because this is the 666th episode of Cannabis Common Sense since its inception in our first show back in October of 1996. Celebrating the devil weed. thank you weed. for <laughs> watching. Um, and uh, we're going to go out on another great song <laughs> from... Jansu and uh, John Cornette. Help us restore him. Help us restore him. Good night. Yesterday's life Somewhere